Okay, good morning everyone. As you're connecting here, welcome. Uh, this is a careers in accountancy. We have application tips and the admissions committee insights. Very lucky today. Um, we have our executive director who will be helping um, navigate this event here, answering some questions, really just going over important information that you need to know and you should know. So wonderful person here, our executive director, faculty, former partner of Ernst & Young, and so much experience. We're going to give it up to Jim Dia. Welcome, Jim. <laughs> hey, Stacy. Good morning. And first of all, thank you, everybody, for joining us in uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm impressed with this group that's already made an effort to join us uh, at what I consider to be quite early in the morning. So welcome, everybody. Well, we're in the heart of the recruiting season right now on the campus of UCSD. Later this week, we've got, I think, close to 30 uh, accounting firms that are going to come in simply to engage with our students, provide opportunities and tips for getting into their organization. And for those students who are early in their collegiate uh, experience, they're in their freshman and sophomore years, definitely wanted to join these events and begin to learn what the opportunities and potential uh, career opportunities are within the professional accountancy circles. I am the executive director of the Rady Masters of Professional Accountancy program. I'm delighted to share with you a couple of, uh, I'll call it a setup for Stacey, who's going to really take you through the nitty gritty of the application process and what we, as part of the admissions committee, look at in our application. So kind of to get it started, let me begin with this. This is the student. I'm considering applying to graduate school. Is this a good idea? Guys, that's a normal question to be asking, and that's the kind of face I would expect most students to have. You're, you're in the middle of undergraduate experiences. You're working really hard. You've just gotten back on campus. You're spending money, and you're not exactly certain where you're going to go. And all of a sudden, you've got a hurdle in front of you, the hurdle of graduate school. And one of the most basic questions you've really got to ask yourself is, is this really a good idea? And the students, many students, most students, even our own kids at our house had to face these same questions when they made their investments in graduate school. Is this the right thing to do at this time? Is the investment the right? Is the direction I'm going in the right direction? Very fair question. The advantage you've got is you've got Stacy Goldstein who's here. Stacy has sat down now with <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students on the impact program. She's seen them where you are right now today and she's seen them through the graduation process in starting their new professional career. So you've got an amazing person to sit down and have a conversation with. And you're strongly, strongly encouraged to bring up any of the concerns that you have. We're looking at thousands of applicants to choose, but we can only have a certain number of people in these programs. And that's our expression. We look at literally hundreds of applications from around the world. And we're bordering towards that thousand. Our, our groups in the MFIN and MSBA program are looking at 1,700 applications each for basically 100, 125 positions. In the accountancy programs, looking at the same type of growth of those wanting to attend UCSD Rady School of Management. And we have to be very selective in who we bring into the program as well. And then there's the profession. We're looking at millions of applications to choose from, but we can only bring in a, a small percentage of it. The accounting firms and the profession will make a tremendous investment in the people that they bring into this career opportunity. And they're looking at the same question. So all three of us, you the student, us the, the graduate program and the accounting profession are all making the same, all asking the same, all wanting to know the same things, which is, does this make sense? Is this is a great investment for you. Are you a great fit for this program and ultimately a better fit for the profession that's coming up? The challenge in front of you is, should I invest in myself and attend graduate school? My comment, our comment is simply go through the process. You may ultimately decide that you don't find it of interest. It's not the right economic equation for you at this stage. Maybe the wrong fit at the wrong school at this stage. But if you don't go through the process, you really never know. So our recommendation is go through the process. It's a modest investment of financial resources it is a significant investment in personal time. And this is the time to begin asking those questions. And as I said a few minutes earlier, Stacy's the right person to sit down and have these conversations with. We're only gonna cover two or three comments, but
But let me begin our, our topics in this particular presentation that I'm, I'm leading. One is we want you to understand you have to figure out what your true motivation is for graduate school. We're going to spend a few minutes on that. Understand the nature of the investment in front of you. Understand what the current situation is in the job and professional circuit marketplace today. We want you to understand what we're seeing going on, particularly with the, the impact of COVID and the acceleration of use of technology in engaging with students. And last one is just an overview of some of the choices available to you. Much of this will be part of the deeper dive with Stacy this morning. And more importantly, is if you go through the application process, you'll really start understanding what the choices are that are in front of you. So let me begin. I'm just like you. I was where you were at one point in time, an undergraduate student at Cleveland State University looking at grad, which I ultimately did, and law school, which I ultimately did. And it helped me, it helped me do some things in life that were pretty cool. Let me say this, and this is the most important thing, and this is really what I bring to our program here at the University of California. We really have a great feel for whether it's the right fit or not. We are not uncomfortable, absolutely not uncomfortable sitting down with a student saying, it's the wrong time. Your motivations are out of balance. The investment doesn't make sense based on what we're hearing. We are not shy about telling students, it's not the right time for you for graduate school. On the other hand, if we feel it's the right opportunity, the right fit, we will do everything we can to get you into this program and get you over the finish line. It really is dependent upon where you are within your professional journey at this stage. Your true motivation. You gotta ask yourself, why do you wanna go to these firms? You know, EY, PwC, Deloitte, and KPMG have workforces approaching 300,000. They're doing 40 billion plus in revenues a year their global coverage, but then you've got BDO, RSM, and uh, a number of other organizations that are also equally spread around the world. Then we've got some amazing local firms. We've got some super regionals. We've got some mini nationals. And you got to ask yourself, what motivates you to want to go down to these firms? I look at motivation two different ways, extrinsic and intrinsic. Extrinsic is simply, I just need a job, Jim. I just got to make some money. My parents want me off of the family payroll. They want me to become self-dependent. They want me to go out in the real world. That's a motivation. And there's nothing wrong with that motivation. It's an important part of life. We've all seen this kind of motivation of, you know, it's time to clean up your bedroom. If you do that, I'm going to give you your allowance this week. If you don't clean your bedroom, you're getting no allowance. So therefore, I'm motivated to do it. Same thing goes on in the profession and business choices that you have in front of you. Simply, many of you are here this morning to figure out another path towards an opportunity to create you know, a flow of salary and bonus. Those are extrinsic motivators. Intrinsic, these are the ones that are self-motivating. You're not necessarily doing it for a compensatory purpose. I'm a perfect example of that. I'm in academia. Don't make as much money in academia as you do in private practice. You make a lot more money here. Why do I do this? I enjoy being on the campus of the University of California, San Diego. I enjoy meeting our students. I enjoy the opportunity I have as I do this morning to connect with you guys and get to know you a little bit better and for you to get to know me because I love this profession. I love sending talented, motivated, hardworking young colleagues into this profession for the long term. It's that important to me. So that's my intrinsic motivation. Hopefully you're looking at these opportunities as I want to become autonomous. I want to be able to go anywhere I want to go. I want to go because I want to be with some of the top talent out there. I want to really challenge myself, become a master at what I try to do. I love the idea, the experience, to work with global organizations and teams. Or I want to be a person that can contribute in my local community, work with one of these smaller accounting firms, and make an impact in San Diego, San Diego County. You got to figure that out, and we'll help tease that out of you. Do we care about your motivation? The answer is 1,000% yes. If you are not coming here with some intrinsic motivation, it's hard for our faculty. It's hard for Stacy. It's hard for me to get excited about you. We love teasing out, why do you want to do this? What do you want to accomplish? What are you trying to get out of this? What's your purpose? 
you just become a much more fun person to engage with when you're driven by the intrinsic side of why do you want to go down this career path. If you're financially motivated, there's other places you can make money tomorrow, maybe even make more money. But if you're intrinsically motivated, you're just a lot more fun to have around this campus and what we try to do and what we inspire to do on our campus and where we try to take our students or help support where you're trying to go. Understanding your investment. You do have choices. You got the current cost, which is tuition, time, and alternative choices. You can end undergrad and go into business yourself. You can be part of another organization. Only you know that kind of stuff. So that left side of this cost element, you got to figure this out. We'll help you ask the right questions and we'll help give you guidance towards what we think those are. The benefits of going forward in another direction, many of you, if not most of you are first generation students and definitely first generation into the accounting profession, we can help you sort out where that career can take you. We can help you understand better with the career lifetime earnings that are out there. We can help you figure out both short-term and intermediate and long-term opportunities of this type of study. We'll point you to resources such as Robert Health, where you can go, not listen to Jim and Stacy, but you and your mom and dad could sit down and run the numbers of how much will I make if I go to San Francisco and I'm a first to third year staff in public accounting versus industry? How much can I make at six and seven years out in this business? How much would I make if I stay on a normal progression, making 11 and 12 years from now? We'll show you how to do that. You got to learn how to run your own numbers. This is just an example. It's not meant for, il for illustrative purposes, but say you went to and you will have choices. You can do cheap graduate programs online, community colleges, other things, or you can do something like ours. You could spend ten dollars to $50,000 for an extra year of studies. You have to, if you go down this career path, invest in certain buy-ins. You got to do the 150 hours anyhow. You got to get a certification. Most likely, you're going to have to spend nine months in the business. But when you start looking at the benefits, you can make sixty to seventy-two thousand dollars immediately after graduation. That means you have a payback under one year. Certifications not only benefit you today; they benefit you through your entire career. That could be worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars over a career having a certification such as the CPA exam. Lifetime income potential really depends on many of the choices you're going to take. Do you become entrepreneurial? Do you make a run at becoming a partner in one of these firms? Or do you go off in industry, be a CFO or CEO or something like that? So you can make a lot of money. Again, you'll figure that stuff out. You'll figure out really what motivates you, what your benefits are. This is just a simple illustration. Achieving your minimum, uh, your goals. I want you to understand. I want you to listen to me really closely. Right now, you believe and your family believes you made a big investment in yourself. The reality is the accounting firms are going to make a bigger investment than you have done by a long shot. Some of the investment decisions that they're going to make is, do I hire you or somebody else? That's a choice. And it's a choice that has risk. If you do not stay with that firm long enough, they've actually lost money on you. They're going to train you initially on how they do their business. And they're going to give you annual training that's quite considerable. They're going to support you. And if you pass certification sooner or quicker, you're going to get bonuses. They're going to have to weigh the impact you have on their organization around chemistry fit. And they are looking at payback. Will you be with them for two months and they've made an investment that is basically written off? Or are you going to be with them for four to six years where both of you have benefited financially through that investment in each other? How do they make or determine the right person to hire? This guy, technology. These little bots are having much more of an impact than they did in my era, where basically a lot of hiring decisions were, went to a, a fair, got to meet an executive, maybe invited out for a lunch, a breakfast, have a cocktail. And they made decisions off of that using our skills, the school that I was going at and the grades that I shared with them. Today, it's far more technology enabled. This is a young colleague that just got in the last couple of days, 
what looks like or appears to be a rejection. But this was sent by a bot. There was no human being that touched this. This was simply an evaluation looking at the job opening, in this case, a tax associate, summer and fall, comparing it with that student's resume. Didn't see enough lining up of the two opportunities. More importantly, this is a student that required sponsorship. And the student in this particular position for the tax associate summer fall 2022 was not going to be able to sponsor at all. So it was a waste of time and it was a poor fit in terms of that opportunity. But let me share with you also, the student actually has an exceptional resume. And a couple of links later, there was an opportunity where sponsorship was afforded. That was a great match. Those of you who are just in the undergrad program, there's nobody out there telling you this stuff and how to sift through this information. One of the benefits of grad school is will help kind of guide you and mold you towards these opportunities. If you clear that set of bots, this is an example of technology enabled by the Ernst Young organization. Not only do you clear the bot, but you get a, you know, you make your application, you get a game-based assessment, then you go through a pre-recorded video interview where they're using AI, and then finally you get to human beings. So what are the firms doing? They're taking large data sets of information. They've been hiring thousands, tens of thousands, 30,000 people a year for a long time. They've seen their performance outcomes over decades. So they have a pretty good pulse, a pretty good feel about what they're looking for that would indicate whether a student is going to be successful within their organization. This data source creates the algorithms. It creates the mathematical formulas where they're taking your resume that you give them, your application you give them, and they're looking at other external information found in LinkedIn possibly scanning what's going on in Facebook, combining those two, and the machine is basically pushing out and saying, we think Jim is going to be a good bet for us. We've looked at his background. We looked at the organizations he's in, seems to be engaged on campus with a lot of people, uh, studying the right topics. It looks like Jim is going to be a good bet. Let's get engaged with him. Let's have a conversation with him. So they're taking all this information together. They're using this technology to basically sift through. And I'm not stretching this. It's in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of applications across these firms per year. So what do you got to do? Don't worry about it. Focus on the things that you control. You've got to know, as you're looking at these two guys climbing up an ice cliff, what do they do? They make sure they travel with the right people. What do they do? They make sure they have the right equipment. What do they do? When you look at a sport like this, you got to ask yourself, are there, you know, as I perfect this sport, can I do other things in life with that? If you do all the right things, study hard, work hard, engage well with your colleagues and students, you're probably going to do extremely well within this profession. But what you want to also do is look at the skills that you're developing and building and ask yourself, can I use it in other applications down the road? And that's one of the intrinsic values of this profession. Now, I'm not talking about the business school. I'm not talking about a particular firm. I'm talking about the profession. This profession allows you to develop a number of skills that can be used in other activities. So you get too high, you know, too old for, you know, climbing mountains like this, too dangerous, too concerned about risk, or you become somebody who can go out and hike through forest and other activities that are just as fun using similar types of skills. Next item, this is really important. Those of you who have done track and field, particularly if you've done it as grade school, junior high, high school, hurdles get progressively taller and higher as you get what? Better, as you get what? More mature, more smarter. The same thing happens in getting into these professions. The earlier you can get in, the lower the hurdle, because they know you're just learning the business. They know you're less experienced about this thing. So if you are trying to get really hard, you know, get into this, these professions, those companies I flashed in front of you a few minutes ago, you got to simply ask yourself, are there places where the hurdles are maybe a little bit lower? And the answer is yes. 
the accounting firms hire 85% of their people through their internship classes. So next fall, almost a year from now, that group of students entering into the profession, into the major firms, 85% of those positions have already been awarded last summer, several months ago, to their interns. So if you're given a choice, do you want to compete for the last 15% of job opportunities, or do you want to compete for 85% of the job opportunities? You're really leaning towards graduate school. You're really learn, leaning towards the internship opportunities and track. On the other hand, if you're not certain about the profession, not necessarily committed to making the investment, go for the last 15% of the jobs. You'll still compete very effectively. Very effectively, you'll compete. But it's just a little bit tighter. The expectation of those students is a little bit higher by the firm. Your room for error, just as you're jumping higher hurdles, is a lot less than when the hurdles were lower. So one of the things that we look at as we sit down with students, we're going to be pretty upfront with you whether we believe you're competitive or not. And we'll tell you that. And you can listen, you can discount, you can do whatever you want to do with it. But we're going to just tell you what we think you are in terms of your level of competitiveness. And if you are not competitive, it doesn't make sense jumping the higher hurdles until you're trained and ready for that. Graduate school applications. Stacy knows already what makes you special. If you can't articulate it, that's a problem. And Stacy will call that out on you. She will look at you. She will know where you've come from. She'll engage with you. She'll be able to tell you why she thinks you're special. But guess what? In the interview process, Stacy's not there. And so Stacy will tease that out of you. And if you can't figure that part out, you may not get into our program <laughs> because at the end of the day, we can't do the interview for you. You've got to be able to articulate clearly what you bring to that employer or to that profession. So again, something you're going to learn through the interview process. Now to the last slide or two, but I want to share with you this. You are on the right call. You are at the right university for opportunities in this profession. We believe, and we look at what we call are, are some of the keystones of what makes a very strong candidate for the profession, it's resilience. And students who are socially mobile, students that have lifted themselves, students that come from families where they understand and appreciate the efforts of hard work and the benefits that come from it, the profession's looking for you. You may not know exactly what to wear, you may not know exactly what to bring to those meetings, that's what we do in grad school. We can help you through that part. The last item, we're going to talk about the ability to self-evaluate yourself. It begins with uh, the beginning process, understanding your basics and foundation. Stacy's going to rip through the items that we're looking for. If she senses you're short on a couple of items, she'll tell you. If she senses that gap is too significant, she'll sometimes come to me and say, the gap here, Jim, is significant, but the student's got some amazing things that you need to be aware of that we think that student can clear those hurdles over the next 12 months. Please meet with the student. Please sit down with the student. Get to know them. So the better you get to know Stacy, the greater the likelihood you and I are going to have a conversation. We will teach you how to self-assess yourself, looking at how firms are looking at branding. Again, when you think about the algorithms I shared with you earlier, these are what they're looking for. They're looking for on your resume, on your LinkedIn, does this, show, does this student show anything around leadership skills or the ability to work with teams? Can they articulate? Can we see their work experiences in the past? And make no mistake, they're not necessarily looking for work experiences in the profession. That, that's a given bonus, by the way. But they're looking, has this student worked in food services? Has this student worked in tough conditions with difficult customers and clients and things like that? So they're looking for these items in your background. Again, we could help you out on that. And I think we are all set. So really, your future is still be written. It's what you do today, not tomorrow that matters. So 
Again, the fact that you're here, the fact you're spending some time with us, we want to welcome you on behalf of Rady. And uh, I'm going to hand over the rest of the presentation to my dear friend and my colleague, Stacy Goldstein. Stacy? Thank you. There I am. There I am. Hello. Thank you, Jim. That was wonderful. Thank you for joining us. I will be uh, walking you through the process. We are going to go through some things you need to know and should know about selecting our school and the application process. So let's give it up. Yes, Jim, yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, yes, feel free to send me an email. Um, you're okay. Yes. So go ahead and send me an email always if you guys have any questions. I am going to go through the process specifically for the Master's in Professional Accountancy program. So we'll go ahead and share my screen and get started. And at the end, um, I will be answering questions. So here we go. And do Gerard, it's not letting me share. If anything, can you just pull it up for me if you have it? Sorry, guys. Let me know if you have it, Gerard, sorry. And as we wait for that to come up, you might be having the same issue as me. As we wait for that PowerPoint to come up, um, just so you know, we are very transparent. As you heard from Jim, we will tell you the truth. If our program is not a good fit for you, I will tell you that um, because it goes both ways. Obviously, we want the best students. We want the best you know, what the firms are going to see, but we want you to also feel comfortable with your decision because it is a big cost. It is a time commitment and our program is demanding. So we want to make sure you are prepared and ready, but we are different than other programs in a great way because we really do care about you. We really want to get to know you and we also work early. If you're admitted into our program, we start right away. We do not wait to the fall. Sometimes you can have up to a year early. So we're going to go ahead and get this started here. Um, now, with being on campus, just so you know, our students are currently on campus. Right now, I'll, we're virtual at the moment. Sometimes we are on campus. I don't believe they're doing um, in-person. You have to schedule an interview right now. Um, we're not really doing – if you get an interview, it will be via Zoom. You can come by our office, but you'll be taken outside. We'll have a chat outside. And just check with our availability because there are certain days that we're on campus. Okay, great. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you coming. Yeah. See you guys later. Have a great one, okay? Thank you. Okay. And I will be actually on campus tomorrow. Thank you, Gerard, for getting that set up. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Yes? Okay, okay good. Perfect. Safe. All right, here we go. So with that said, application tips and insights, we're going to get right into it. Um, next slide. And there's my email. Um, I'll put that in the chat as well if you have any questions. Okay, here we go. What do you need to know before you apply? So first off, what I was just saying, making sure this program is for you with your goals. It, like I said, it goes both ways. So is career placement a top priority? Then you're going to want our program. Uh, we really stride ourselves on helping you get career placement. For domestic and permanent resident students, for the past two years, we are at 100% job placement. Um, international students, I would say 75%, we're still working on those last students. It is more di difficult being an international student receiving placement in the United States, but we work on that. We have connections, we have relationships. Um, obviously, domestic, permanent resident, you're going to find it a lot easier for sponsorship. That's just what it, what it is. But we work very hard, and we're not happy till every single student gets placement. So if that's a priority for you, then you're going to want our program. Um, Hands-on experience and learning up-to-date information, that is our program. We are not doing stuff that was going on in the accounting world even two years ago, three years ago. If it's before COVID, then it might as well be completely different. We are going with up to date what is going on today in the world and what you need to know for the firm. Capstone project, 100 of 150 hours, you'll be working with the firm directly and a small team. So we want you to feel confident when you go into the real world, the firms want our students because you are prepared. They know that our program it's demanding in the sense you're given a lot. You're doing seminars. You're doing hands-on experience with a real-life um, project, helping the firm with their problems. You're getting all this up-to-date information. These are things, and doing networking, these are things firms want. Okay. 
Um, are you most concerned with the high score in your CPA exam? Maybe our program's not for you. There are schools out there that, oh, with top CPA exam scores, or you know, we're in the top 90 percentile, 80 percent. That's not us. That's just the truth. With our program, will you pass? Yes, you will. But we do not teach to the test. Um, we will prepare you. One of our core courses is specific for state CPA exam prep. We do that early on. No one's going to ask you what your score was. No one cares what ranking. A perfect score is just passing. That's it. You just need to pass. No one cares what score you at. Uh, but some schools advertise that. That's not us. Okay. Are you open to working on a small team? It is individual, obviously, your grades, but the capstone, you'll be put with about five or six students in your group. So just know that. Um, and it's still good networking. You do get to know these firms. You'll have tons of one-on-one -on -one experience with the firms directly um, year early if you apply early. We'll get into that. Are you open? Let's see. We offer a nine-month program that moves fast. Some students, oh, can I extend it? No, you cannot. It's only full-time at this moment. Starts in the fall. Um, starts at the end of September last for nine months, that's it. We were doing special circumstances because of COVID and extending it to give our students more time to arrive to the United States, for example, if they're international. If things keep going well and better with the world, that won't be an option anymore. So just plan on it being nine months and that's it, okay? Um, the OPT, CPT, that's still there, but only a nine month program and it moves fast. That's why we start early to give you more time to prepare. Okay, um, no concentration offered. No thesis or dissertation. Some schools like USC does a tax, you know, emphasis and other schools can do a minor. We do not do that. It is just the Masters of Professional Accountancy. We feel it is important to understand all aspects of the accounting world, especially in this environment. But our program has a lot of electives. 40% is electives. So you can cater it to how you want. You want to take business analytics class? Do it. Finance classes, you got it. If there's availability, you can do it. Um, MBA classes, no problem. So that is an option where you can really make this degree what you want and figure out what field of accounting you want to be in. But if you know, I want to be in tax, that's it. Well, then maybe you should choose a school that just offers a program in tax, just so you know. And it is flexible. We change our curriculum often based on what is going on with the needs of the firms and how the world is working. COVID really threw a curveball at everyone and we took our program and adapted and we need to prepare you. So um, no thesis dissertation, instead you are doing a capstone project. So this is 100, 150 hours you're earning. Um, you can put it on your resume. Our careers team will help you with that. It is not paid internship, so they'll help you on how to word that. Um, but you're getting a credit requirement for your program and you're getting that hands-on experience. So it's both. Um, location, that's something to keep in mind. Some schools are great, but they're not in a good area. Uh, you're stuck at school, there's no life. Um, I would, we're not a party school, that's just the truth, but it's a fun environment, it's relaxed, it's right by the ocean. So if you stressed out or you just wanna get away, literally a couple minutes and you're at the beach, um, there's transportation that goes around, you can see the ocean from campus, it's really nice and relaxing, and it's just a nice community. I've been around the world, and it's my, one of my favorite places is La Jolla, where the campus is situated. Okay, so something to keep in mind, Riverside, you know, even USC, eh, you know, good, you know, good school, especially USC, but, like, you want to look at the overall location, safety, things like that. Okay, Gerard, next slide. So I'm, I'm trying to move a little bit quickly. Perfect. Okay, so getting started, the application itself, uh, we review applications with a holistic approach. So what does that mean? We look at all aspects. We just are not concerned with the GPA itself. We look at other, obviously we're looking at it, but it's not just that. We're not just looking at a test score. Anyone in a sense could get a high GPA, but what else have you done? You know, there's more to it. And that's what firms want. They want students who are well-rounded. They want workers, you know, employees who are well-rounded. Um, when you are filling out the application, you as an applicant, fill out the recommendation section first. That's my best advice. Go right to it. Because what happens is your recommender is then contacted. But uh, so many times, students are done with the application and they're waiting on a recommender. 
So just get that out there. Once you put in their contact information, your recommender will be contacted via email, and then they can have some more time to fill that out as you complete your application. Now, should you check on them? Yes, you should. And sometimes it does go, we found out to the spam inbox, we're trying to fix that one. So that's where you will be like, hey, did you get it? Just checking in, thank you again for doing it. And maybe give them a heads up that you'll be sending that to them. Okay, so we do look at accounting grades um, or previous experience, yes we do. Um, we have an upcoming internship, let's see. If you have an up upcoming internship or job or plan to take additional accounting courses, please include that in your application. There will be a section. If you have a bachelor's in accounting, that's great. That's, that's awesome. If you don't, if you just have a minor, that's good. But if you're just doing classes or you had a different degree, put in there, you know, if you have taken accounting classes or you're in the process. Uh, maybe you have a great internship coming up, but it hasn't started yet. Put that on there because it's still hard to even obtain that internship and we want to know because that goes with who you are and your motivation and your drive. So if there's more that I can't see, tell me, okay? We wanna know. So with that said, do you need to take the GMAT or GRE? Um, no, technically you do not. Uh, we waived it and I think we're permanently removing it actually. With COVID-19 happen, we kind of took that away. Some programs still require it. Other schools still require it, we do not. Again, it's not just about a test score. Now, if you did take it or if you're thinking about taking it, could it help you? If you have a high score, it, sh it, sh it could help you. But my personal advice, if you have a low score, I wouldn't submit it. Don't do it. And what is a high score, low score? I'd say the average for the GMAT is about 650. Um, GRE, like 310, 315, 320 is good. So you kind of have to want to see, you know, where that falls in line and debate if, okay, I did take it. Do I really need to submit it? If you did take it and you did well, do it. If you maybe didn't get, you got a lower GPA, this could be a way to make it up, especially if you do well, go ahead and provide it, but it's not a requirement at all. It will not make or break your application if you do not have it, okay? Um, show your personality and passion for this field. If you have a solid accounting background, that sells itself. If you don't, why do you wanna be in this field? Even if you do have a background in accounting, why do you wanna be in this field? Again, this is what firms want and with our students, we want motivated people. That's how we, we do it. Firms want students who can communicate, can work with others. This is what people want. That's the same. So just try to show your story in your application. So include your career goals. Try not to repeat your answers. Some of the questions, they kind of give you the option to repeat yourself. Try to make it different. Try to make it unique. Because what we do is we take those career goals and we look at those and we, we're honest with you. I'm honest with you in the interview. Hey, this is going to happen or it's not going to happen. If you're an international student and you want a big four firm, we're gonna go through that process and I'll be honest with you. It is more difficult. And then we'll go into specifics. But let's location, put that in there where you wanna be. So give us as much as you can, especially on career goals, because that's what we do. And I'd rather you know before you make a decision for which graduate school, if we can't help you or if we can't help you. Okay, be prepared, be prepared to provide documentation from previous work experience. If you get a big four firm, that's hard to obtain if you had a previous internship. And, you know, we want to make sure it's just legitimate because, you know, people worked hard for that and there are additional fellowships that could be had for any experience. So they have made it where they could ask for that um, documentation. All human resources should be able to provide that. So keep that in mind. If you interned at a bigger firm, we might ask you for it. So maybe just get that ready. If you don't have documentation, reach out to HR, reach out to a supervisor, have it ready to go because you might be asked to provide that. So you'll see that disclaimer in the application. Okay, if UCSD is your top choice, make that known. Um, people apply, I see that you already went to, you're going to a good school. Why wouldn't you stay there? They have a solid accounting program. You wouldn't have to move, why? Why do you want to go here? Let us know. Because if we, if it's really a passion, meaning if you really want to be here, can I help make our decision? Not necessarily, but we want to help you. If you really want to be here, we want to try to make it happen. So let that be known versus just staying at your current school. Okay, Gerard, next. All right, 
We're getting there. Okay. So next round, the interview. So how it works. So we review applications in the order received. The sooner you complete it, the faster you will know if you made it to the next round. That's just a fact. So everyone's focused on deadlines. Deadlines, it's just a way to, you know, try to do some kind of like accountability, hurry up, let's go. But the sooner you get it in, the better. And that's when the services start. We'll get into that. Now, if your applications move to the next round, that is the interview. It will be held via Zoom. I did give the option before to do in person, but because of the Delta variant, we're still keeping it Zoom, even if you're on campus. Um, so just know that. If you are on campus and I, I can meet you, we can always talk outside, but the actual interview itself will still be held via Zoom. You will be sent an email to schedule an appointment. Um, I'll give you dates, I'll give you times. It's, it's, calend it's a really easy format how I send it. You choose what works on your schedule. Uh, most interviews are scheduled with me. So you get to see this face again if you get invited to the interview, okay? Um, sometimes Jim will pop in or the other parts of the committee. You never know, but usually it's me. The interview is about 15 to 30 minutes. So with that, it can go by quickly, just depending how everything goes. Sometimes it can go a little longer. When, when I say don't read off the screen with your answers, try to show your personality. It's because we want to get to know you better. Um, some students have some questions prepared. I, there's a site online I looked up where you can, um, they talk about interviewers and like what questions they answer. I've looked at those. I see what people put. So I specifically don't ever ask those questions again. I try to switch it up. And the whole point is not to, you know, throw you off your game and it's not to like try to surprise you. It's more important of just be natural because when you are in an interview with a firm, it's going to be the same thing. So this is not pressure point. You don't have to a tie in a, a suit. That's great, but it's really a chance to get to know you and vice versa. We want you to feel comfortable. It's a comfortable environment. We're not like super strict with that stuff. So just try to be natural as possible. Um, it's good to rehearse. It's good to like be prepared. But if you're just reading and I know you're reading, it's hard to really engage that it's authentic and natural. Okay. So the questions will change kind of what I just said. And based off your answers in the application, I do read the applications. We read that. We look at your answers and we might ask you questions about what you wrote. And this is a good thing because we want to, again, make sure this is, program is a good fit for you and ask you specifically, oh, I see here that, you know, you're, you're worried about working in teams or you had a bad team experience. How do you think that's going to be in the capstone? What would you do if you have a team member that's not participating? How do you handle that? So just be prepared for that. I might look at certain things in your application. So be comfortable with what you put in your application because it might come back on the um, interview. Okay. And I give you an opportunity to ask questions at the end. Again, it's important that you know what exactly what you're getting as well. I think we're a great program. Our students love it, but we want to make sure you know exactly what you're getting. We're completely transparent. So just at the end, Bring on the questions. Okay, next, Gerard. <clears throat> Timeline. We try to move quickly with reviews, but there are still wait times. So we review in the order received and only on business days. So just know that we don't review on the weekends. So try, just know that if you submit it, it might take a week or two, but let me know if you do not hear back within two weeks upon completing your application. If you do not hear back after two weeks, please contact me. And there's my email, okay? I'm trying to gauge how quickly things are moving. Now, after a deadline, it will get busy. I'm not going to lie. It might be a little bit past two weeks, but we do try to move through quickly to give you some answers on how to move forward. You might be contacted by other admissions coordinators for missing items. So if you're missing one recommendation, you're missing a certain part of the transcript or a TOEFL score, the coordinators will contact you. Go ahead and email them back once you've sent it so they can confirm. I do not receive, the committee does not receive the applications until everything is on file. So if you're missing a recommenda recommendation, I'm not going to be able to review it, okay? Oh, Stacey, where's my application? I haven't received it yet because you're still missing an item. So just make sure that everything's there. So you cannot move past the first round until the missing items are, are complete. That's basically it. So that could slow you down. That's why you do the recommendation section. That's typically the one thing that's always missing. Okay, Gerard, I'm ready. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> timeline after interview. 
So you get past the first round, your application, you're sent an invite. Hey, guess what? You know, you've been invited to the interview. You have the interview with someone for our admissions team, probably me. You'll typically hear within three business days after the interview. Sometimes it will be within 24 hours. You just met, met Jim. Jim will review it as well. Um, the committee, if I get a hold of everyone that day, you're trying to hear quickly. We do try to move quick to get you answers. But again, depending on when the committee is available and Jim, it could take a little longer, so just be prepared. It could be after three business days, especially if you had your interview on a Friday. So something to keep in mind when you schedule your interview. If you scheduled on a Friday, you're probably not going to hear till the next week. Um, after you are admitted, your application is forwarded to main campus, and their review timeline can take longer, that's for sure. It can take up to two to three weeks. They're reviewing applications for the whole university. This goes the same for any other school you apply to. So even though we are moving quick at Rady School of Management, you're still probably going to have to wait a few weeks to get an official acceptance. Now, if we nominate you after the interview, that's pretty much guaranteed, but they are going to check your transcripts. They're going to make everything, make sure everything's correct. Have we had it before where we've nominated you and someone hasn't been admitted? Yes, but it's rare. Just make sure it's what you put in your application of your GPA matches your transcripts, for example. It's stuff like that, that that's where you could get um, removed. Okay, so you will get an official notification from UC San Diego once you have provisionally admitted. So if you make it the interview round, you do well. Within a few business days or less, you'll get it from me, a notification saying, congratulations, you've been nominated from Rady School of Management. And then it goes to UC San Diego, so UCSD, then you'll get an official admit from them, official admit email. And once you've been notified from UCSD, that is when you will receive your fellowship offer within a few days of that. So everyone's um, eligible for a fellowship, international student, domestic student, permanent resident student. If you need fellowship help, put that in the application as well. That does help. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it does help. And then during our interview, I could tell you certain fellowships and scholarships you should look out for or apply to separately. So that does help us. Um, plan. So let's say you've been admitted, your fellowship amount is sent. Okay, this looks good. Usually you're given about a month, month and a half to make a decision, official a decision, and your seat is not saved until you make that $1,500 deposit after you've been admitted. And once you make that deposit, that is when the services start. And we'll get into that next. Okay, Gerard, I'm ready. Okay, so services start right away. After you make the decision, yes, I want to be in this program. I want to be a part of it. Great. The 1500 deposit, that secures your spot. You have your student ID. You get your student email within a few days after that. And more importantly, once you have that student email, you're ready to go, we start our services. So once you've deposited, you will get access to our resources. Those include career resources, our advisors, that's the big one. So one-on-one, -on -one, um, Kathy and Michelle, specifically with our accounting program, you'll be invited to all the recruiting events, like meet the firm events, seminars, one-on-ones. So these are things that you want. They'll start reviewing your resume. You're going to update it right away. Once you've deposited, boom, I'm sending you the resume guide. You're updating it. You're updating your cover letter. You're setting up an appointment with Kathy. You're getting her walk-in hours. We don't mess around. We start early invitations to seminars and networking events. So the sooner you apply, the sooner you're getting access. If you finish applying by November, great. You might have access in December or you know January where you start this process of getting to know our staff, getting to know our team, getting prepared. And honestly, the big four firms, they hire early. They start to recruit by the end of March. They're done. Um, they'll open up more, but they they started it really early this last year, and they're doing it again. So access to resources from the current co cohort, you'll start to be invited to the events that our current cohort is attending, um, including the seminars and networking events as well. You will receive that support. It could be up to a year early. So 90% of our students did receive career placement before they start in fall. How did that happen? Because they started early. They did our services early. We helped them secure internships. Internships typically lead to jobs. And then you have career placement already in hand before you start the program. That's the majority of our students. Great, I already have a full job offer. When I'm done with my master's, I know exactly what I'm doing. 
And this is why the advantage of our program, not all programs, I don't really know many programs that do this or any, but we do this on purpose. Again, it helps you, it helps us. And when you're in the program, it moves very fast and we want you to just focus on the curriculum and the capstone, the program itself. Okay, so support from executive director, career, student services, and me. So I'll be guiding you through, not just with admissions, but to the point where you're then working with student services. I still pop in in classes. I've been going every other week and stopping in, checking in. I'll still be with you. Jim, who you just met, your executive director, very involved. He will be checking on you. He will be making sure that you're going to events and going to class because he really wants you to get everything out of this. If you need help, I need scholarship help or I need CPA help, go to Jim. He's always open. You will get to know him very well. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> Capstone and elective. So go ahead and take a look at these, if you could read it. Um, accelerating digital transformation through strategic mergers and acquisitions. Give me a thumbs up. Can you guys read that? See it? Okay, cool. Read those. These are the topics that were in our last capstone. We've included them into the curriculum. So if there's something that looks good, great. You're going to learn about it. Again, we keep up to date with what is going on in the world today. Like this is what's happening. These are what firms want, and this is what you will learn. The capstone projects change every year based on the needs of the firm. So we like some of these topics, so we're putting them into the curriculum this year. And this is what we do. We keep changing it based on the needs and the demand. Okay. So 40%, we already talked about that before, includes electives. Analytics. You want a little more background? You want a little more background with MBA? You want to add that on? Include that in there? You can do that. Now, those students in that program will get first choice, but if there is availability, you will get that as well, and vice versa. They can't get into your class. You're guaranteed. So you're in the cohort, stay pretty small. Um, we're trying to be under 70 again um, for next year. So the class you're looking at, fall 2022, electives will get smaller because you could really branch out. You might only have 20 students in your class. Okay. Okay. Next question or next slide. These are the deadlines. But like I said, don't wait for a deadline. Yes, they're there. Yes, they're, you know, we do consider them. But once the class is full, it's full. I really don't want to go over 70 again. So we stayed under 70 this year. Before that, we try to keep it lower. We want you to have one on one with your professors and our team. So if you can't make the 15th deadline, should you wait till no November 15th? Oh, I have up until November 15th. Just Turn it in when you're done. That's my best advice. Don't wait till the end of a deadline. If you're a day after the 15th, you're fine. But an influx of applications will come in by a deadline. So just you might have a bigger wait time if you did wait after a deadline. That's just the reality. It's just we go in the order of receipts. Okay, next. Bring on the questions. Okay, so we'll take it off the share screen. We'll go ahead and open it up. I know we have like about five minutes, but you have my email, so you can go ahead and just email me if you have any specific questions. Um, go ahead, you can come in the video. Um, you can take yourself off mute and ask me, or you can ask me in the chat. Grab me for, go ahead, and I can go over a little over um, nine o'clock if need be. What questions do we have? Go for it. Aaron? Hi, hi, hi Stacey. Um, so hi. I have a question about the 90% statistic um, so of students um, landing, in, landing a job. Hey, hold on. Hold on, Aaron. My sound. Hold on. I can't hear you as well as I want. Oh, oh we just. Bear with me. Okay. Go ahead, Aaron. Oh, hi. Um, I just took my headphones off. Is that better? Can you hear me? Wait. Don't leave me. It was working just fine. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Is that better? Okay, Aaron. Try again. Okay. Um, am, am I coming out? I can. Yeah, you are. Okay. Good. I've been having technical difficulties. Thank you about that. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, um, so my question is regarding the 90% statistic um, that you discussed that students have landed a job before starting the MPAC program. Yes. So do they start super early as soon as they were admitted to try to find a job or an internship? So 90% so ninety percent receive placement. So what that means is it was a, usually an internship, but also really secured a job position because typically most, if you get an internship, it usually will offer, be a job offer, but that's not always the case. And so what has happened this last previous class, 90%. So we started almost a year early for the majority, at least six months prior. So we helped secure internships for most of those students. 
If not, we started put, putting them in front of recruiters for job positions upon completing their master's. So we would present, hello, you know, Ernst & Young, this is Aaron. He was an incoming student for MPAC 2022. Like right now, we already have students admitted to fall 2022 because they were nominated junior applicants or deferral students from last year. They're already been in, being introduced to firms right now. You're not behind. You're still early, but this is what we do. So once you're admitted, go time. So those students started early. They went before the junior, uh, I think the January 15th deadline that had everything done. So if you're done early, you're already meeting recruiters. You're already meeting with the firms and getting set up for interviews. So out of that, you might have an internship. Do you know if you're going to have a secure position yet? No. But if that goes well, the internship, then yes, you will. And if it doesn't turn out well, if they don't offer you position, then we transition and we move on to the next and you still get a full offer. Does that make sense? Yeah, Thanks. that's great today. Thank you so okay. much. Perfect. You're welcome. Great. Like most of our students in the class right now already have firms, um, positions lined up, or they already came into our program with a full-time offer, but they wanted to start the master's first. So we had a student that came from Georgetown. She already was working at um, PwC, and they offered it back. So she's going to return to D.C. and start her full-time career there. We have a student from Deloitte in Germany, but she wanted to be located here in the United States. Great, Deloitte already offered her position in the United States. So this is what we do, whether you have a job already lined up. If not, we'll help you. Good questionnaire. What else? Anyone? Anyway, see, see a few repeat people here. Um, so if you do have any other questions, just email me directly. Um, I am, it's been busier, I'm not gonna lie, because we are in the main cycle now, so it might take a little longer than normal to get a response. Um, we are holding another event in November with Jim, and I'm trying to get alumni. Now, if you want to really get a full, don't take it from me, don't take it from Jim, you wanna hear it straight from the students. If you're admitted, Let's set it up. If you're admitted and you want to hear from them directly, I think you should. Um, I'll introduce you to the alumni. I'll introduce you to the current class. And once you're admitted, we do a LinkedIn group of just your cohort so you get to know each other before you start. So, you know, if you're admitted, then please go ahead. If you're not admitted yet, you're going through the application process. I will try to set that up or we'll have alumni events. But really, if you're admitted, then you know, okay, I have a real shot of going here. Yes, I want to meet the current students to really know if this is the right school for me, if that helps. And don't be intimidated by all the applications we get. If you're passionate, if you could show that motivation, if you even if you don't have a solid accounting background, but you, you're you going to work hard at it and that's, this is where you want to be, we will help you and we want you here. If you have that passion and that drive and you could show that through an interview or even your application, that's what we want because that's really what matters at the end of the day. Firms are picking people even just with the prerequisites of the accounting prerequisites, no big previous accounting experience, but they like their personality, they like their drive, and they're getting hired. They're getting hired by good firms. So what else? We have uh, I run over at the time, but any other questions? Was it helpful? Did it help a little bit? Yes? Okay, good. I know it's a lot of information all crammed into this time. So again, if you think of anything else separately, let me know. Will I be able to go through the nitty gritty without you doing the application? Do the application. If you really get stuck in a certain section, please let me know. But the main thing is just get that submitted and then that process starts. But do contact me if you don't hear back within the max two weeks because I want to know as well. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you, Gerard. He's also part of our admissions team as well. Sorry to introduce you before, Gerard. So a lot of your questions, if you do the main inbox, that's Gerard. So now you, you see his face. I'm glad this was helpful. And again, we're very transparent. So if you want to know something else, thank you, Gerard. There's my email. Just contact us because, again, it goes both ways. We want you to be a student here, but you also want to make sure you find the right school for you. That's key. You're welcome. Thank you. I look forward to seeing all of your applications soon and meeting you again in the interview. All right. Have a great day and hopefully talk to you soon. Thank you.